Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm back with one of the reels that I previewed. It's a pretty nice looking reel. It's a Pen 209. It's a made in the USA version of the reel with the burgundy side plates. And uh, unfortunately, it's suffered the fate of many of these that have those plastic or Bakelite uh, side plates on the bearing side. It's got a snap. And what that does is it causes uh, frame twist. You can see there's a little bend to the metal piece here. Uh, it makes the spool run tight. And in this case, for whatever reason, our line guide has come loose. I don't know, probably from getting whacked. Now, usually that gets whacked along a, a boat gun wall, gets whacked against a pier railing, gets dropped, right? You get a big fish, you get excited, you drop the reel and it's, it does that. And there's really nothing you can do about that. Now, I have seen examples where people have gone and epoxied these, and it's been okay. I mean, cosmetically, it doesn't look great, but it's been okay, and it's worked, so that's uh, that's cool. But what we're going to do today, the uh, owner of this reel is fortunate. I did find a uh, complete side plate, so I'm going to show you how to, to, to really work on this thing from transferring the pieces to the side plate and taking this apart, replacing that side plate, cleaning it up, it's not terribly off cosmetically. Yeah, it's a little bit more weathered, but it's certainly going to be more functional. And rather than toss the whole reel, we're going to give this reel a second chance by replacing some parts. So if you have this reel, you're going to see how to take this reel apart and service it during this uh, uh, conversation. You're also going to see how to replace the side plate if needed. You'll see how to reinstall the line guide so that it doesn't kind of lay out like this. And uh, we'll take you all through that and hopefully over the course of the, uh, the video here. So as we get started here, I like to, to take the reel apart, starting with the external pieces. And uh, while I have those minutes, while you're watching me do wonderful things like removing screws, I like to thank our first responders and uh, essential personnel and frontline healthcare workers, EMTs, and everybody else who's involved in keeping us safe during this pandemic really do appreciate all of your efforts and uh, for those of us that are not frontline workers and uh, essential personnel then we should uh, take the time to thank those who are and we should listen to what they're telling us in terms of how to stop the spread of this horrible disease so please take the time make the effort and uh, stay safe so you'll also notice a couple of things i'm taking the parts that i remove and i'm putting them into a part tray and uh, I'm also wearing a, a glove on my uh, non-working hand here so that I can keep uh, the contaminants off of my hand uh, as I complete this, this project. So pen, uh, one of the things about these older pen reels that's nice is the average person can work on these reels. There's nothing fancy about it. All you need is a screwdriver and a wrench and from time to time a pliers. But for the most part, the uh, pen has made it easy. And I think that's one of the things that uh, has done this well. So I would encourage you, if you uh, are that average guy or gal, go ahead and uh, service your reel. And uh, this video will help you when it comes to a level one reel because there's a couple extra pieces and maybe a little bit of a tip or a trick in terms of how to reinstall this. So this reel is in really nice condition. Don't know the backstory behind why it broke but that's okay, we'll get that piece out of there. And uh, in order to replace the side plate, you have to take all of the pieces and parts off. Now, typically this would be found, I guess, if you had a replacement, you'd, you'd probably try to buy new with a reel in this condition. Unfortunately, the new parts are no longer available for the side plates, so well, you're kind of out of luck there. Uh, next you could do is you can go to some place like an eBay or a secondary market see if somebody is selling the parts and most likely what you find somebody might be selling the whole reel as a parts reel because something broke and uh, if it's their misfortune sometimes it's your uh, your luck <laughs> unfortunately a lot of times you see the parts reels because this side plate is broken uh, that's typical on a, a model 60 it's typical on the which is the Long Beach series it's typical on the Delmars and the 85s for sure it's just it's a weakness in their uh, their manufacturing design, I guess. But uh, if that's the only thing you can say is weak, then you're in pretty good shape. All right, 
So we have a, a minor bend. It's not much, but it's a minor bend. And what I like to do is just kind of reverse the bend. And I, I do that just, you know, I mean, let's see here. Just try to find the fulcrum where it did bend, which was these two eyelets, and just press gently using just hand strength. And you can usually get it close enough without going crazy. I've seen people try and do things, bang it with hammers, put boards on it, do things like that. Uh, and they only wind up in worse shape and have to get a new trim ring uh, at the end of the day. So just a little bit of op opposing force from the way that it fell out. And of course we're going to clean it up since we have it off the, the reel anyway. The other one didn't come with a trim ring, so I was able to find the other one for, I think it was just around $15. It wasn't much considering the value of a reel in this condition. Uh, so we want to take the, the bearing side off and we want to take the idler gear off. Looks like the transition gear for the worm drive came off already and we want to take the click ring off. We're going to transfer those pieces. Now most of the time you can't change the click tongue and that's because they're peened on. A lot of people say I got a worn click tongue, how do I fix that? Well most of the time you can't. You can drill that out and get a replacement and interestingly enough this one has the later style. It has a C-clip with the, uh, the click and the tongue so if this one needed to be replaced you could find the replacement for that and I get a lot of questions about that. Can I replace the, the tongue? I said well if you want to be careful go ahead and drill that out and then buy the later piece off of the 209 which is also going to fit the Long Beach series and some of the others. Go ahead and buy that piece along with the button and you will be able to do the, uh, the, the reset on that. Okay, so this came off. So you just can't mount that right away. You got to take the idler gear off. And again, I'm using the parts from their reel because this one didn't come with it. So you want to make sure it's clean. This is a Teflon part. It does not need uh, oil or grease. I'm just checking the teeth. I want to make sure they're all there. Otherwise, you won't drive the, the level wind. And then you have to put that idler gear in before you can put the click ring back on. So let's go ahead and do that in the new plate. I'll put a drop of oil or two on there. I'm using an aftermarket oil. I'm using Relax, which is a synthetic oil. Uh, we also have the worm drive. Now this is a metal piece. I'm going to put a little bit on that. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. It's a blue grease. Not because it's a pen reel, but because it's a fishing reel. Just had a conversation a couple of minutes ago with a fellow. I asked if we could use gun oil. And the answer is in a, in a hurry you could, but if it's designed for fishing reels, it's better, so go ahead and use the fishing reel oils and greases. Okay, now I'm just going to spread the wings here. That's the click assembly, but you got to hold it in. So we'll go ahead and grab the screw that goes in there. Install that. One more piece, you want to either oil Or you want to grease, or both, that side plate bearing. And we're going to install that on the other side here. All right, and then we can put the trim ring back on so we can hold that little piece in place. Line up your outer holes, press down. And for the most part, we've we've taken it. There's a little bit of a wobble, so I'm going to go ahead and just try and put a little bit more body weight on that. I'm going to be off camera. But these are basically tin, so they bend pretty easily. That's why it bent on the way out. Okay. And, and where I see that we have the little bit of the bend now, that's going to get pulled in with those crossbars. So we'll be in fine shape with that. All right, I'm going to set that to the side and come over and work on the other side of the reel. We're going to 
Remove the bridge and make sure all of this is in good condition. The bridge contains the drag washer, so you want to do a drag washer service there. And this reel also will have an anti-reverse dog and spring. So you'll notice I'm cupping my hand here because when I push this through, I do not want to lose that spring. Now some folks will put it, take a gallon uh, Ziploc bag or sandwich bag or whatever we call those, something like this. They'll put the assembly inside that before they push this out. That way if the spring does fly, it's trapped in the bag. Great idea, whoever sent that in, I do uh, not claim that to be an original thought of mine. But uh, if you want to do it that way, that's fine. I've had success cupping my hands, pushing the bridge through. And typically, I will find the spring, and there's the spring. So this is the little spring I was talking about. It has a tendency to shoot. And I like to put that into my parts tray so it doesn't go running off somewhere. And we have our gear. It's a good thing I took this apart. There are some little fragments of something in here. I don't know if that's the drag washer or just some old grease. We're going to find out in a moment. And then I want to remove the gear sleeve. There's a pin that holds the gear sleeve. You simply take a something smaller than the hole. In this case, I'm just using a, a little punch. You can generally pull the pin out the rest of the way. Remove the gear sleeve and get at the grease that's dried on the shaft underneath that. Clean that up if you need to. You can use some steel wool. Just kind of scrub it down a little bit. Since there was some dried grease on that uh, shaft, there's probably a little bit of grease underneath in that sleeve. So I'll go ahead and uh, use a cotton swab to clean that out. That seems nice and clean. And we'll go ahead and reinstall. I'm leaving those parts on my bench rather than putting them in a tray because I'm going right back with it. Light coat of fishing reel grease. Let's get the gear sleeve right back on. The pin goes in next. And those of you that are watching, you're seeing that I'm getting a little bit of grease on my working hand. I wish that I could find a way that I could make this work without uh, with a glove on that hand. I just don't have a lot of luck with that. All right, and I just push that in all the way. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the drags then. That would be next up. You can push the drags through from the back. This has the old leather drags, so you can use leather drags. They're fine. They just need to be flexible like this. If you take the drag out and it is cracking or dried, uh, then you best replace them. But in this case, they seem flexible and there's nothing wrong with them. They've been used for a long time. And uh, unless they are worn or fragile or cracked, you don't have to worry about that. All right, checking the teeth on the main gear then. You can go ahead and use a uh, soft brush if you like, clean out the channels. I'm not seeing much in there. Notice what that glove is doing. It's keeping all that chunk off my hand. And then we can reinstall the setup. So the setup is a drag washer, a round washer, or a what they call a keyed washer. Second drag washer, and then there's the eared washer. It has a circle with two prongs sticking out of it. Then it has a, another drag washer, another circle, and a cap washer. That's the sequence for this if you've gotten lost along the way. I am going to use some drag grease on it. It's Cal's Universal Drag Grease. I'm going to start by putting the main gear on. I'm going to kind of dip the washer into the grease. The grease helps to keep that drag washer lubricated and flexible so that it doesn't dry out and crack. All right, first of the keyed washers. We're going to do that again. This is where the glove becomes a tool with that, rather than getting it all over your hands. Now we have an eared washer, and there's going to be two slots in the main gear. You want to find them. Sometimes they're easier to find than other times. Looks like right around there. It is. 
and you'll note when you push it down that it, you can see the inset is laying below the lip. That's how you make sure that it's there. We got one more of the drag washers. Again, we'll get it buttered up pretty nice now. You don't need to put too much grease on there because it's only going to press out when you start to compress the drags to, to give you that hold on the, uh, on the spool. So don't over flood it. It's a waste. And the cap washer goes on. That's our sequence there. All right. To uh, service the top end, we're going to push down on the yoke so we can get the, the jack off. Get the yoke out and the two springs. These are going to stay right on my bench as well because they're going quickly. You'll notice four screws came out there. Those are the bridge screws. Again, you can put them in your porch tray or since I'm going to put them right back on, I'm going to just leave them there. Just a quick buff with that uh, steel wool for a little bit of cleaning on the chrome. Then I'm going to grab a cotton swab. We're going to take all that old grease out of the, the channel there. And that's grease that just got pressed out. The, the main gear was dry, so it got kind of got pressed out of there. And then you just want to clean it up because the old grease isn't going to do any good. And, it may do harm if it's got uh, salts or sand or any of that stuff in there. That you know, grease acts like a glue after a while. All right, we're in clean mode there. Just a little bit more here. All right, nice and clean. So we can go about re reassembling. So again, we're going to put some some grease onto the gear side bearing there. That's where the spool is going to seat. I'll put some grease up top on the eccentric. Get my dry grease out of the way there. The two springs go in the cavity. We want to clean off the dried grease on the yoke. Let's see if we can do it with a paper towel. A little bit hard so you can go in the next level, which is 4 0 steel wool, which is not very abrasive, but it will clean off the old grease. Let's take a look at the pinion gear or spool gear. I'm going to do the same thing that we did with the main gear. We're just going to clean those channels out. And wipe it down with a paper towel if you like. And then we're going to lubricate the yoke so that the gear slides nicely. And put the pinion gear on and we're going to lubricate the teeth on that. And when you go to install this one, the slotted side faces you on the way out. That's what's going to be accepted on the spool. One last thing we need to do is get grease onto the main gear. So we'll just make sure we do that before we reinstall. Okay, that's the assembly. I just need the dog spring to come out. And I'll guarantee I'll probably be looking for it in a second. Okay, we take the yoke assembly with the gear installed, put the center of that, push it down, take our jack and slide it over the top, see to make sure that it's around the stud there. Take our bridge assembly and put that in and rotate that approximately 90 degrees. We want to take a fully threaded screw. There's two types of screws. The fully threaded screws belong on the bottom. We're going to grab our, our dog. We're going to sit the dog in so that it is riding on the, um, uh, the, the gear sleeve with those little um, teeth that it's going to stop on. That creates a cavity in the side plate. And that little spring that I was afraid of losing goes onto the one side of the dog and on one side of the side plate and be careful it's a spring it's a sometimes called a flying ant because it looks like an ant and if you don't have it set proper like that you can see it lying there in that little cavity if you don't have it set proper it's going to shoot once you do that then just being careful rotate it so that you can see the screw over the side plate there get it set and then just one or two turns don't completely tighten that down yet. Just get it set. Then you want to grab one of the partially threaded ones. It's partially threaded because those springs that we put in on the yoke are going to ride over that or glide over it better. Better said, glide. And 
that's going to make it easier for the spring to go up and down. It won't catch. Let's go over to the other side and put that other partially threaded one. And then we'll come down to the bottom put that last piece in. Once you have them all grabbing, you can tighten them down and go back in the opposite direction then. Kind of go high, low, and side to side. Like that. All right, and then you give it a test just to make sure it's all operating properly, which it is. Make sure you're, you can grab your grease brush and get a little bit of grease onto the face of the jack. Make sure that that's operating. All right, now we can rebuild the reel. I'm going to take that reel seat. I neglected to tell you on the way out, but there's two different size screws. There's a small screws and longer screws. The small screws belong in the reel seat. We're going to go ahead and install that on the new side plate. And again, these screws are going to pull in if there's any little gap in the uh, uh, in that metal ring from being bent. It will pull it back in. These are not the easiest things to do, but we will get through this together just like the pandemic. Line that hole up. Let's put that second small screw in there. Okay. Now what we want to do is grab our crossbars. top crossbar has the ridge in it. And don't set this one all the way in. And the reason for that is you need to turn this a little bit to reset that line guide. You just leave, it, leave that a little bit loose. Okay, in the back crossbar. And notice that I'm putting the crossbars on the non-gear side. And that's because when you go to mount the line guide assembly, you need to work from the other side. If you're working on a pen 9 or a 109, you, got, you can't put this particular crossbar in before you put the level wind assembly in. There's not enough clearance in the, uh, the way we're going to do this. All right, that's our uh, side there. Next up then would be the spool. We want to make sure that we get some grease on both posts of the spool. And that little drive in the back there. Same thing on the front. Set the spool in. We're going to grab our uh, little line guide shield. And this is uh, kind of where you need to pay attention if you've never done this before. You don't need to do a balancing act where you're trying to load everything in at the same time. Simply take out this, uh, this little line guide uh, bearing. Center the Put the side plate on and just start the screw. Don't go crazy. Don't tighten it down, but start the screw in the far side plate crossbar. And that's just to keep this thing from spinning when you go to install the rest of this. Sometimes uh, this little pick helps kind of keep it in alignment. But just one or two turns, something like that. You want to do the same thing up top here. Just 
just like that. All right, now take your shield. There's two sides. There's a short side and a long side. The long side goes to the back. You want to work that in where you can get them into the pinholes on each side plate. Just like that. And now you can go and tighten and you've got your shield down. And that beats trying to struggle it with the line guide in. Okay, I'm going to grab the other ones again. You have a short screw and a long screw. Two short screws go into the real seat. one there is that goes on the other side now if you put the long one in there you're gonna have the stud sitting out of the back of the real seat and it could jam line it could catch it so do what uh, the manufacturer did put the short ones in there we've got one more that goes in this one here and we'll be able to insert the line guide service the line guide before but insert it afterwards So right now what we've done is we've showed you how to take off and transfer all of the pieces and parts on your, your side plate that was replaced. So it clicks on. We've showed you how to rebuild the gear side and now we're showing you how to service the line guide which is the last part. You want to remove the pole and the carrier. I check that make sure that the teeth are equal here. You can use a pick and clean out any dirt that might be on there. There's a little bit of dirt there. That'll clog your your channels on that worm gear. You want to oil that and then you can reinstall. You can remove it if you like to work the oil down below like that. Just make sure it gets seated properly on the way back in. And typically when you remove it it's not going to line up perfectly when you go to reinstall. So you have to work this a little bit. First of all, you got to get it threaded. I think we got it there. If you tighten it down all the way initially, you usually wind up jamming it because the teeth are not in the thing. So it'll usually stop somewhere around there. Twist the bar like I'm doing here. That'll help catch the teeth. You gotta do it kind of in increments, but it'll help catch the teeth and eventually those teeth will line into the groove. But don't go cranking it down all at once, it just won't work. And eventually you'll feel that it's in. We're getting close here. It's just an iterative process. There you go. Now it's in. All right. Do that. Since we're on the uh, ocean side, I use oil. I don't use grease in the worm. I believe the worm uh, with the grease on it catches the micro sands and uh, salts and the like and jams those channels and makes this less effective. All right. The moment you've been waiting for. How do I reinstall this so it's not flapping up against that bar? So. I, I'm going to loosen that bar first because I'm not sure that I have that groove properly lined up. Generally sighting it, it's kind of about there. All right, take that bar, drop it down, and push this bar through the hole like that. Then you want to align and get that line guide into the groove. So I, I think we just need to turn that a little bit more. That's probably it. Bring it over. Put some grease or oil into the side of the bushing, uh, the bearing that uh, for the line guide. Go ahead and start hand tightening that.
and you don't have to tighten it all the way down just make sure that it works or that it's in there perfect set in there nicely all right your sleeve goes on referral star adjuster goes on and just be careful you gotta get, gotta get this thing set right At the risk of cross stripping it, just take your time. I think we got it that time. Tighten it down as much as you can with your hand. Now, if we didn't put the grease in this skewer sleeve, you could put some oil in there now. That's why the little bolt on this, the uh, handle screw, says oil. But if you just greased it, you don't need to put oil in there. Let's put that handle screw on. I have a, an aftermarket wrench. It's an Allen Tanny wrench for pen reels. But if you have the one that came with the reel, that's certainly fine. This one's a little bit thicker and a little bit longer. And if you work on pen reels a lot, it, it's, uh, I would recommend it. But I wouldn't recommend it if you're just going to do service on one reel. All right, and then we just take that little hold down screw for the handle screw there. Set that into the handle. And moment of truth. So we're gonna turn this. We have a nicely operating reel. It's not getting caught on the crossbar at all. Remember, we did leave that a little loose now, so let's make sure that we, we tighten that before we send it home. Just a little bit. It's it's really a matter. It's that should be right now. There you go. And you want to check it to make sure it doesn't pull out. It's a nice little reel. Check it for the spin. And now you have a solid side plate. And then this reel's going fishing. Check the uh, clicker. Nice loud clicker. All right, so uh, this is a, uh, a reel that Dan sent in, and we've got two more of these to go. But uh, I, I hope that if you've had a problem with a cracked side plate, you now know how to address the issue by replacing it. If you've had a, uh, a 209 that needs service, you now know how to service it. And uh, if you're just curious about the reel, you know how it was put together and why it has lasted as long as it has in Penn's lineup. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you have questions on this or any reel in particular, uh, maybe you've got one on your desk that's uh, open and you're having a problem with it, uh, shoot me a note on my uh, email. If you have any questions, you can also leave them in the comments section. I try to respond uh, to as many of those questions as I can. Uh, and finally, uh, if you uh, like to see videos like this, uh, please subscribe. Uh, subscriptions keep my channel viable. And if you have a reel that needs service and you're not up for repairing it or just maintaining it, and you would like me to provide that service for you, well, I do that as well. And you can contact me on my email on the business card that follows for repair and service information. So with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.